dear fellow presidents and rectors, dear mayors, dear presidents of the chambers of commerce and industry, dear colleagues, dear guests, and those who have joined us on the live stream, among with my colleagues from the Executive University Board as well as among with the Mayor of the City of Mainz, Michael Ebling, and the Honorary President of our Chamber of Commerce, Rhein Hessen, Engelbert Günster, I would like to warmly welcome all of you here in Mainz. I would like to extend a special welcome to Heike Raab, Secretary of State and Authorized Representative of Rhineland Palatinate for Federal and European Affairs and Media, as well as to Vanessa debier saint Head of the Higher Education Unit at the European Commission. For a long time, it was absolutely unclear whether our meeting could place despite the corona pandemic. And when we decided in May this year that we would be optimistic and try it, we were very aware of the risk of having to call it off at the last minute. That we can now be here uh, in each other's physical presence brings us a great joy. We welcome you in the year of an anniversary of our university. In 1946, 75 years ago, the old Mainz University was reopened as Johannes Gutenberg University Mainz. And in the next few minutes, I would like to explain why a major forum conference is exceedingly appropriate for our anniversary year. The reopening of the university as the Johannes Gutenberg University Mainz was a ray of light in dark times. Opening a university in 1946, just one year after the war ended, in a former military barrack, was of trailblazing symbolism and its effect on the city of Mainz, which during the war had been almost completely destroyed, was far-reaching. That pioneering spirit, that hope, can be felt in practically all of the speeches held during the opening ceremony in May 1946. Josef Schmidt, the first president of our university after reopening, called the establishment of the university, and I quote, a grand beginning in this bleak world, a hope that from rubble and chaos, fresh new life could grow in minds. The goal of the, re the establishment of our university after the most horrible crimes against humanity was to rebuild a free, peaceful, and humane society which embodied, and I quote again, cooperation among men in the spirit of truth, in the spirit of democracy, in the spirit of humanity. We owe this reopening merely one year after the war, this miracle of minds, as people of the time called it, mainly to the French military government. Without French support, the reopening of a university in Mainz would have been unthinkable. During the opening ceremony, General König, French commander-in-chief for Germany at the time, said, and I quote again, this land has long been a battleground between our two hostile peoples, and we now know exactly how high the price of this is. This experience can only lead us to transform a place like a military barrack into a place of peaceful encounters to promote the exchange of new and constructive ideas. From the beginning, this university was meant to be more than a national institution for teaching and research. From the start, it had the calling to be a place of understanding among nations. That is why JGU's connection to its European partners has always been an important component of its guiding principles. Our founding fathers would be proud that we were able to institutionalize this European idea, an integral part of JGU since its foundation with our For Them Alliance in 2019, just two years ago. We have been cooperating closely with our partners in Dijon and Valencia since the 1970s. Connections to Riga were added in the 1990s and a little later to Opol. With Palermo and Uvescule, we were able to welcome two fairly new partners to our alliance, and it is a special delight to look ahead and greet the delegations from Atke and Sibiu. Our founding father's European vision is still applicable today, and I would even say it's more important than ever. The current political developments show this very plainly. 
rising nationalism in many countries and events such as Brexit show us that it is more important than ever to instill European ideals to our students. The European idea can only be lived if we can give our students and future generations the freedom to experience it. They will carry the idea for a united Europe into classrooms, into businesses, into politics and into society. Therefore, it gives me a great pleasure that you all followed our invitation to Mainz and we have the time today and tomorrow to get to know each other even better and intensify our collaboration. Let us continue to work on our Fordham Alliance and let us continue to work on a vibrant Europe together. Thank you very much for your attention. And I now gladly hand over to Secretary of State Heike Rapp. I welcome you in Mainz, and it's a great pleasure to see you personality physically here in our main capital. And I like to greet you dear President Krausch, and my very best greetings to all Vice Presidents, Vice President Jolie and Müller-Stach and our um, Chancellor of the University, and all Presidents, Rectors, Chancellors of the Alliance Universities. And on behalf of all Mayors, I would like to greet our Mayor, Michael Ebling, and I like to greet all partners and, for example, the President of the Chamber of Commerce, dear Mr. Günster, and I greet you, all students. I will say, dear friends, cher ami, queridos amigos. As member of the state government here in Rhine and Palatinate, we are proud to live in the heart of Europe. Rhine Palatinate is the German state with the most external borders. And we have been working for many years to overcome them. We want our citizens to move freely across borders in order to learn, to study, train or work or simply shop or meet family and friends. Cross-border cooperation is our daily business. So with this in mind, I would come to more, it would come more obvious than the idea of a uni, European university. The European University Alliance are indeed the next level alliances that span the continent uh, like a global network, are intended to pioneers for new approaches to mobility, teaching, university cooperation and joint European research. As you know, the idea of those alliances go back to a proposal by the French President Emmanuel Macron in September 2017. And not surprisingly, Rhine and Palatinate has supported this idea from the beginning, not only politically, but actually quite hands-on. In December 2018, the alliance, which was just forming at the time, had the first brainstorming meeting at the Brussels representation of the state of Rhineland-Palatinate to the EU. Your probability, your probability can imagine how pleased we are when the For Them Alliance was selected as one of the first 17 European universities in summer 2019. Dear friends, dear ladies and gentlemen, universities, like no other institutions, can build bridges between societies promote their renewal and bring together young people from different nations. They contribute decisively the sustainable formation of European identify to the cohesion and depending on European values and to the consolidation of consensus about European tasks and the role in the world. 
The universities united in the For Them Alliance already bring a lot to the table, each in its own right. Together, however, they can be a true European force. Let's start with a look to the, to the bare figures. They are 200,000 students, 17,000 researchers, 13,000 administrative staff, and 127 research institutions and 18 campuses and 35 associated partners. That's a lot. Here in Rhineland-Palatinate, for example, these partners range from the Mainz City Council and the Rhineland-Palatinate State Parliament to the Chamber of Industry and Commerce, the pharmaceutical company Böhringer Engelheim, the public broadcaster ZDF and uh, 3SAT, and the Rhine Mine Publishing Group, as well as the Institut Francais Mines, the Theatre Mines, and the Max Planck Institute for Chemistry here in Mainz. But of course, there is so much more. The seven universities, tomorrow nine universities, bring the histories to the Alliance. Their roots in their region, their focus in teaching and research are concepts for imparting knowledge and skills. In particular, however, they contribute the inherent drive to find and experience new things to develop further and thus to advance the university, their students and society as a whole. The importance of the For Them Alliance for our state can be understood best by the fact that the alliance was included in the Rhineland-Palatinate coalition agreement signed by our three governing parties in May this year. Under the heading internationalization of universities and university alliances, it states an outstanding example of European cooperation is the For Them Alliance, of which the Johannes Gutenberg University is a member. We are proud of it now, dear President Kraus. But also, on the EU level, the European universities are of a consist consistently high importance not least as a link between the European education area and the European research area, both are projects that aim at a Europe growing together with common values and an unrestricted freedom of movement. The European universities are to play a special role in this endeavor. Dear friends, dear ladies and gentlemen, the For Them Alliance includes universities from regions which we, which we maintain already close friendship for many years. More than two decades, for example, for, or two decades ago, for example, the Opola Voivodeship and Rhineland Palatinate led the foundation for their current partnership. Our partnership with the Bourgogne region today, uh, Bourgogne-Franche-Comté, will celebrate next year the sixth, 16th anniversary. And next week, I will be in the region of Central Bohemia, joint our partnership network. And we also have leased tender bonds to the uh, Region Autonoma of Valencia, and the city of Valencia has been one of the twin cities of our state capital of Mainz since the late 70s. Now the For Them Alliance has expanded our borders once again. In one fell swoop, we have together to Palermo, Juvescula and Riga, and the alliance will now grow once again. 
Tomorrow, more universities will sign a declaration of intent to join the alliance. The Romanian University Lucian Blaga in CBU and the University of Agda in Norway. I welcome you. I emphasized earlier that we, meaning the regions, have moved a lot closer together through for them. Of course, the alliance is first and foremost a university alliance, but the for them alliance wants more. It also sees itself as a part of the region in which the universities are located. It wants to reach out into civil society and work for the citizens of its cities and regions. The companies and the public institution, institutions just as it does for its students and employees. And it wants to involve them in its work. The better this succeeds, the more the regions can grow together offering new opportunities for cooperations and development. We have so many challenges already of, ahead of us, from finally overcoming the pandemic, achieving the climate targets and succeeding ecological change. As research and educational institutions our universities play a central role in how successful we as a society and an econom economy will be. For the next two days, students and leading figures from the Alliance universities, from the cities and the chambers of commerce have gathered here in minds to talk about new opportunities and get new projects off the ground. I think this is more than a strong sign. This is living Europe. Have a good time here in Mainz. Thank you very much. Dear State Secretary, and a valuable perspective. Two years ago in November, 2019, we have been attending the exciting kickoff meeting for European universities in Brussels, and today we have the pleasure to welcome live, although remote. Do we see her yet? Vanessa de Bies Santo. I saw her on the screen down there. Head. She is head of the unit in charge of higher education policies and program at the European Commission's Directorate General for Education, Youth, Sport, and Culture. Please. Vanessa, what are the future plans for European universities? Good afternoon, everyone. You can hear me fabulous, okay? It's a pleasure for me to, to be with all of you this afternoon. We very much welcome all your efforts to move towards a truly strategic and advanced cooperation with the For Them European University, constantly involving more members of your universities, including through For Them uh, Speed Dating, uh, an innovative new concept, the successful implementation of the LAMS uh, that you've uh, implemented, like Experience in Europe, Diversity and Migration, Climate and Resources, Digital Transformation, just to name a few, has been a remarkable joint achievement already addressing key societal challenges in a transdisciplinary approach. The For Them Campus and its Digital Academy is also another great achievement to foster more mobility and new formats of learning and teaching in, in closer cooperation between, between your institutions. So I think we all agree when I say that this shift needs proper support from within your institutions, as well as from the outside, from the EU. This is the path towards structural, systemic, and sustainable impact. And in that respect, you know that you have several allies, first and foremost, in the European Commission and in the EU, but also in the member states and in the many companies, cities, and regions that are working together with your higher education institutions to achieve stronger synergies and cooperation. And of course, in your student and staff, always so committed. 
we need to work together because the European universities is not a short-term project. This is a long-term process, a process that demands a great deal of resources and a big amount of commitment on everybody's part. And this process also demands that we all listen to each other. We have been consulting extensively with you and with everyone else on the further rollout of this European Universities Initiative. And we seem to constantly arrive at three vectors for our action. First, we need more sustainable funding. Second, we need policy support for cooperation. And third, we cannot funnel this vision to affect just a few institutions. So we need to think broader, looking at the whole, the whole higher education sector. So let's start with the more sustainable funding. I'm happy to tell you that we are preparing the launch of a qualitative and competitive calls under the, the Erasmus Press 2022 and 2023 work programs. We are listening. You have told us how important long-term funding is to make sure that cooperation is sustainable in the long term, because these changes take time and resources, and we agree. We want to make sure that the work of the first two rounds of European universities continues to bear fruit. And you have shown us uh, um, how much it's, it's worth it. So, like I said, these are not short-term projects, and we follow through on our commitments. So our first priority here is to make sure that you have steady resources, and that is why we are proposing a revised funding model for the next steps based on a budget that is proportional to the number of full partners in the alliance. And specifically, we are proposing four plus two years bridge funding model with Erasmus+. Plus. We want you to continue building strong transnational cooperation between the partners in the alliance. And we are also uh, looking at other European uh, sources of funding to support your alliances uh, as well in synergy with Erasmus+. Plus. Second, policy support. We know European universities are facing quite a number of challenges when it comes to implementing joint educational activities due to the lack of coherence between the various higher education systems. For example, when it comes to the accreditation of joint transnational degrees, if you have to go through seven different uh, processes in seven different countries, each of them having different limitations, it completely hampers the creativity and the innovation. So we need absolutely to address that. And that is why we are working on a council recommendation for more effective transnational cooperation in higher education. And we want to address the most pressing challenges that you are facing on this front. We aim at presenting it early next year, and we are aware that the French presidency of the EU um, is, uh, is very committed to have it uh, um, negotiated and adopted by the end of the, their presidency next year. And the third, we need this initiative to be valuable to the whole higher education sector. Your lessons learned will be extremely useful to so many other institutions and it will maximize the, 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 the throughput of our investments through Horizon Europe as well as through Erasmus+, Plus, not to mention all our work on the policy front. And here of course enters our European strategy for universities. We need to invest in higher education institutions throughout Europe this is key for Europe's recovery, and it is key when it comes to implementing the European Green Deal, the Digital Decade, the Skills Agenda, or the industrial strategy that were presented last year. Now we move to the implementation, and your higher education institutions have a key role to play in this transition and this recovery of, of Europe. And, and for that, um, we want to provide you support and to empower you to, to really play fully your role in, in this objective. And your example with your European university should inspire all of us and, and really the, the whole higher education landscape. We know that change is never easy, but we also know that especially when we disagree with each other, having tried and tested experiences can make a huge difference. 
So I thank you once again for your invitation. Uh, we dearly need more initiatives like yours. And I wish you all lots of success with the further development of your European University. We count on all of you to make it happen, to make it a reality on the ground for all your students and staff, and to provide the right skills to so many young people, especially as we are soon to enter the European Year of Youth next year. Thank you very much to all of you. Thank you very much, Vanessa de Bies Santon, for these interesting insights. We hope that you have a chance to follow the event online and the panel discussion via live stream, maybe. The comprehensive dimension of the European universities is really unique, and so is for them. Welcome to a new kind of university, the European universities. Welcome to For Them, fostering outreach within European regions, transnational higher education and mobility. The For Them Alliance is a network of universities united by a shared vision. For Them works for them, for the generations that will shape the future of Europe. For them, our alliance provides an innovative, mobile, science-based education. Universities from all over Europe join forces to achieve this goal. France, Finland, Germany, Italy, Poland, Latvia, Spain. Within this network, all students, academics, researchers and staff can connect across borders and languages. For them dedicates itself to three core missions. With For Them's mobility programs, a student's life may look like this. Live in Poland while taking online courses from Burgundy and visiting Sicily to learn Italian complete an internship in Finland and start volunteer work in Germany. Make friends from Riga and find a job in Valencia. All university members can gain experience by traveling abroad or sharing knowledge on our innovative digital platforms. The seven for them labs are modern interdisciplinary think tanks involving researchers and students, as well as external experts. Together, they tackle the big societal challenges from climate and sustainability to migration, digitalization and the future of Europe. Through its outreach activities, For Them takes the ideas and ideals of Europe beyond university and into society. It brings Europe into our classrooms, educating teachers and getting schools involved. It fosters a network between cities, companies and institutions in every region of the For Them Alliance. In line with the three For Them core missions, the project Fit For Them is focused on research and innovation. Experienced scientists and administration experts share their resources and infrastructures to initiate an institutional transformation process, paving the way for Europe-wide cooperation. A joint research agenda and innovation strategy for the Alliance is being developed with all partner universities. Through activities in education, innovation, research and service to society, the For Them Alliance will succeed in becoming a diverse, unique and sustainable European university, working for Europe today to shape the Europe of tomorrow. So I, I would like, I too would like to extend a 
warm welcomes. Today I have a dual role. I am uh, speaking as a vice president of our, uh, for, for teaching and learning of our University of Mainz and as a spokesperson for the Fordham Alliance chairing the steering committee. And in both roles, I feel especially honored to have you all sitting here in front of me um, in person. I, who would have thought this possible a few months ago? We just heard what the European University Initiative means, what a huge and important project it is for Europe, for the countries involved, and for us as universities. Following up on what you've just said, Vanessa, I would like to paint a clearer picture for them, not down to every last detail, but yes, in a nutshell, in a nutshell. I'm very grateful for this opportunity because today, Today, really, a dream of mine is being fulfilled, and I ask you to bear with me as I begin on a, little, on a personal note. I can clearly, clearly remember the 30 years Erasmus celebration in 2017. As professor for medieval literature, I was head of a strategic European strategic partnership, and the national agency, the DAAD, had invited me to the University of Heidelberg. We were celebrating a massive success. Over three decades, the Erasmus program had sent 3.6 million students abroad in Europe. And we laughed about the one million Erasmus baby, uh, a serious estimate, by the way. It's really a Europe without borders. But our high spirits were short-lived. The most recent studies were very clear. The 5 to 10 percent of students who profited from the Erasmus program were primarily privileged young men and women from higher economic and social backgrounds. Europe, the European model of education, a project for the privileged. And coming to this realization precisely in the same year which uh, officially ushered in Brexit, in the same year in which national demarcation efforts throughout many countries began to pose a lasting threat of the great idea of Europe. So for me, and I presume uh, for many of us, Emmanuel Macron's speech at the Sorbonne in September 2017 came uh, as a breath of fresh air, a new hope, saying, let us rethink the idea of Europe and of the European higher education area. Let us create a concept for the European University in which everyone can truly participate. Let us bring Europe to the people in the cities, in the regions, not as a privilege for a few, but as a diverse Europe for many. As it became clear that the European Commission was taking the idea seriously, there, that there would be a call, we started to earnestly discuss the matter. We obviously want to be part of this movement, but how were we going to make it happen? Was it even possible? Could we ever realize it? Soon we were in talks with our close European partner universities, with Dijon, with Opler, with Valencia, and we quickly noticed that we shared the same vision. We wanted to move in the same direction. Soon we were partnering with more universities with whom we initially only had discipline-specific connections. And then, at the end of 2018 came the call from the European Commission and the Commission, thanks so much, Vanessa, they did exactly the right thing. There was a vision, there were goals, but the Commission did not prescribe us fixed ways. Instead, they said, we know where we want to go, we don't know how to get there. Only you, the universities, can figure it out. Who has the courage to forge a new path we will help. So together, we managed to find this courage, although it felt like we were supposed to cross an ocean of unsurmountable challenges in nothing but a nutshell full of hope. But then there were one of the first to be selected. We were one of the first to be selected. What a success. And we grew together so much so that even today I have no idea I have no idea how can I accurately summarize all our efforts, all that we have achieved so far. Perhaps it's the spirit, and that's what I would like to call the for them spirit. If the task is too great, if you think it's all too much, 
just get started. Even the longest way begins with small steps. So let's begin. If someone were to ask what for them is, the answer would be short and simple. We are an alliance united by a shared vision of Europe. Together, we take stand against nationalist and isolationist tendencies. We support a scientific point of view, which means critical thinking, the ability and willingness to accept complex as well as alternative answers instead of merely searching for simple and easy solutions. Multilingualism and our regional impact are essential to us and are reflected in the acronym for them, fostering outreach within European regions, transnational higher education and mobility. However, this acronym can also be read another way. It's our vision in a nutshell, our pledge. Everything we do, we do for them, for every student, for every staff member, for the citizens of our cities and regions. That is it in a nutshell. I could end my speech here. Allow me a few words on how we approach these ambitious tasks. Our alliance covers all European regions by uniting the seven universities, Uvescula, Riga, Opel de Mainz, Dijon, Valencia, and Palermo. We are made up of state-funded research universities. Some are relatively young, some have a long-standing academic traditions. For them, universities may not be the largest transporter or the most closely linked universities, but every member university is firmly rooted in its respective European region. And some are interlinked by political structures such as town twinnings and regional partnerships. To quote another Mainz celebrity, Jürgen Klopp, the very European football coach, we are the normal ones. I will take you on a short tour of our lines, focusing on the most on the main benefits. Each slide will also display at the same time then a picture of each of our universities along with the number of enrolled students, giving you a better idea of our member institutions. Although our journey has only just begun, we have come remarkably far in the last years. Together, we have made great strides from a bilateral or trilateral cooperation towards a transnational university. It is the first truly strategic university-wide international partnership for all of us. Never before have so many staff members from different universities been simultaneously involved in the same international cooperation. We have a common government structure involving presidents, academics, administrative staff members, and of course students from all seven universities. We have daily interaction between four of them offices and see ourselves as more of a big four them family as a mere corporation. We are especially proud of our various expert groups, such as diversity, quality assurance, and joint degrees, just to mention these three and our networking opportunities for administrative units. We have also established a digital strategy, and not only due to pandemic, especially the implementation is quite a huge undertaking, you can imagine. But these are just the basic, the necessary basics, and a means to an end. At the heart of the Alliance, there are three missions. A mobility mission, a for them labs mission, and an outreach mission. At first, the mobility mission, bringing Europe to the people, bringing Europe together. Without mobility, we have neither united Europe nor the space for a European university. This means summer schools, team teaching, classic, Erasmus semester, double degree, civic engagement project, online courses, internships, academic speed taking, staff weeks, and so on. And to reiterate our commitment, mobility is not to be understood as a mission tailored to an European elite, to an academic elite, or to a social elite, but is genuinely for them, for everyone. No overloading, no impossible expectation of visions of a multilingual jet-setting education. Bringing Europe to the people, to the students, every and especially to those who are maybe insecure in a foreign language or culture, to those who 
due to their financial or living situations, don't have the freedom to indulge in longer stays abroad. Fordham aims to implement these new innovative forms of mobility of activities to include international mobility in every student's education and to make it a crucial part of staff activities. How will this work? The panel discussion later this afternoon will be dedicated to answering that question or to give some hints to this question maybe. Secondly, the lab's mission. Universities are hubs for research and learning. With the future-oriented themes of our labs for them addresses topics that are relevant to our communities and regions. The labs are an example of the successful pooling of research expertise and involve about 500 academics, students, and associated partners. It's all about the implementation of the so-called knowledge square, education, research, innovation, and service to society. Our labs are seeking research-based solutions to organization-specific, regional, or European-wide or global challenges. A poster gallery dedicated to our labs will be available for viewing after my presentation out at the coffee break. In light of our research, we can't forget our Horizon 2010 project called Fit for Them. The development of a joint research agenda and open science policies, the sharing human and infrastructural resources, and the widening the outreach dimension are at the heart of this project, which brings me then to our outreach mission. The outreach mission aims to facilitate the exchange of knowledge between the Fulham Alliances, Fulham Alliance Society and the economy ensuring the enhanced employability of the students. For example, we are convinced that it is necessary to bring Europe into our local classrooms, which is why teacher training is one of the main concerns of our outreach mission. At the same time, we encourage our students and staff in civic engagement in our cities and regions, and we offer internship opportunities. That's why this meeting is so important for us. The cooperation with the seven city halls and the seven chambers of commerce and industry will be crucial for our future. The outreach mission will also be addressed in a panel discussion to follow. Those are our three missions. But as I have stated before, for them ultimately exists for the students, for those who are enrolled at a university and will shape the society of tomorrow. We can guess at some of the challenges they might face, but cannot know them all. And that's why for them is not necessarily focused on preparing students for a specific field, but on giving them a solid foundation, basic competencies, future skills, and effect-driven scientific habitus are at the core. For them is a university by and for the students. In addition to participating in mobility activities, students can experience for them as co-creators. They are represented in the steering committees, in the mission boards, and in, of course, in all of our labs. For them aims to impart the foundation of European values. But now, what are those European values? This is one of our key questions, diversity appreciating and respecting this diversity, valuing the other, appreciating regionality. Three labs, several webinars, and expert group deal with topics concerning diversity and inclusion. An example of this is our model European Union that simulates political processes in the European Commission and the European Parliament. Multilingualism plays a central role in each of our seven work packages. Summer schools, civic engagement projects, and the lab are concerned with climate change and sustainability, and for them will be represented during the 26th United Nations Climate Change Conference in Glasgow this year. For them, the University Alliance still in the making. In the light of completing our geographic balance, I'm very pleased to announce two wonderful additions to our network, the University of Agder in Norway, 
and the University of Sibiu in Romania. As you can see, the European idea and the Fordham Alliance are continually evolving. So once again, a warm welcome to our new partners joining us on our tiny but yet ambitious nutshell on this way in its way into the future. And again, a warm welcome to you all from the various universities, towns, and regions. You all have a long way behind you, and we are so grateful and proud to welcome you as our guests. But as far as you have traveled, and as far as we have come together, our journey has only just begun. So before I hand over the mic to Thomas Chabo, who will say a few introductory words about the various poster that you will find at the outside. Before that, let me say one final word about the dream I mentioned at the beginning and why I consider it fulfilled today. With this meeting, we are starting a new chapter. As of today, the European University is no longer, longer a project. As of today, for them is in reality what it is supposed to be for them is here to stay. And although we still have a long way to go, we stick to our commitment. Let's keep going together for them. Thank you. Dear Fordham community, it has been such a pleasure uh, to follow how our seven labs, that is, our seven international, multidisciplinary, and multi-stakeholder expert networks have emerged and grown during the last two years. As their name shows, the labs have proved to be laboratories of co-creation among students, researchers, and university external partners. What, bring lab, what brings uh, lab contributors together is a deep interest and motivation to address challenges and potential for growth in areas of study that are central to our communities. Such areas include climate change, health-related quality of life, feeding humanity, digital transformation, diversity and migration, multilingualism in education, and experiencing the several ways of being European and belonging to Europe. Labs invite citizens with various backgrounds to work on research-based outputs of different scales, genres, and target groups. For example, some groups develop seminars with a focus on local communities. Others create full-fledged courses for the use of all Fordham uh, universities. And several groups work on academic publications for a global audience. This variety of scales and aims makes it possible to reach out to various societal groups and make impact in tight cooperation with and for them. Structured work in the labs helps members of our Young Alliance to get to know each other, share expertise, explore, and learn something when, while creating something new, uh, useful and fun. Beyond factual knowledge, hundreds of contributors bring their diverse perspectives and working culture to the labs to establish and maintain fruitful dialogues. Apparently, such dialogues have been attractive. The number of contributors and outputs have far exceeded the expectations set in the original work plan. Reading the blog posts on our website and visiting the lab's events, one can gain a better understanding of what keeps people interested in labs. As a student expressed, 
it is possible to integrate one's passion and experience when contributing to an output in a safe and collaborative environment. Another student appreciated that while working on outputs, he gets introduced to the specific working and social practices of an international academic sphere. A young academic, in turn, highlighted how significant it had been for him to be responsible for the development of an output. From this task, he has built further his leadership skills, which are essential in career development. In their testimonial, teachers from a partner school emphasized that they had received fresh ideas from the university students and academics, and the collaboration with the lab had helped them to see the bigger picture where schools have an important role in the changing world. They felt that the output they contributed to empowered their pupils and developed their creativity, cooperation, and digital skills. For these reasons, they initiated the continuation of collaboration with the lab and would like to stay on board for a long time. I do hope, and at the same time I am convinced, that more and more new contributors will experience such benefits from the labs. When inviting you to the exhibition, I would like to emphasize that the posters demonstrate how labs increase education, research, and innovation activities in Fordham which is manifested, among others, in transversal activities and cross-labs cooperation. Some labs have started cross-alliances cooperation already. This wealth of exchange and co-creation shows the potential of the Fordham labs, and this is something we can be very happy about and proud of. Now let me present you the lab contact persons who are here today and who will be very happy to share further details with you about their contribution, their lab's contribution. Experiencing Europe Lab is coordinated by the University of Opole and uh, today is represented by Professor Barbara Surivo from Opole. The Diversity and Migration Lab is coordinated by the University of Palermo and Professor Annalisa Manjaracina will uh, tell you about their activities. I will represent uh, Multilingualism in School and Higher Education Lab, uh, which is coordinated uh, by my home university, the University of Juvescule. The Digital Transformation um, Lab is coordinated by the University of Valencia and is today represented by Professor Christoph Blessy from uh, Mainz University. Climate and Resources uh, Lab is coordinated by Johannes Gutenberg University here in Mainz and is represented by Dr. Martina Kirilova from Mainz. The Resilience, Life, Quality and Demographic Change Lab is coordinated by the University of Latvia in Riga and um, Professor Rafael Kalisch from uh, Johannes Gutenberg University will tell several details about their work. The Food Science Lab is coordinated by the University of Burgundy, and Professor Frederick de Beaufort will present it uh, from the same university. I hope your conversations with the lab representatives will inspire new ideas for joint actions. In sum, I believe that this poster exhibition encapsulates an amazing prospect that the labs have achieved despite all the difficulties uh, of the pandemic situation. A huge thank you goes to all who have made this possible and filled the work of labs with life and inspiration. I wish you memorable moments of learning and also celebration Enjoy your time. So, welcome back, everybody, from our short coffee break. I'm very excited to announce to you that we will now start our panel discussion, Fortem, Our Vision for Europe. 
And we are live streaming here from the University of Mainz. Uh, and also, we have our audience here. So I welcome both you here in the room as well as the people who are watching us via the YouTube uh, live stream at the moment. <laughs> My name is Marietta Gerdeke. I'm the moderator for uh, our two panel discussions, which we will have now. And I'm super excited about for them because I have the feeling, even though my time here at my alma mater, the University of Mainz, is already like some time ago, but I already kind of lived the for them dream. I did my Erasmus in Dijon. Uh, I have friends who got to know each other at the University of Valencia. Uh, I traveled during my study time extensively because I was very active in our student community, in our debating society. So I can really feel like what it, what it could mean to all the people out there who we want to engage in this vision of Europe, in this vision of for them, which we have. Um, and I'm also very curious to expand on this idea. What does it mean? What will it mean in the future? Where is for them going? And who best to talk to than our panelists here? Um, we have for our first panel discussion on the mobility mission of for them, um, Barbara, Barbara Zurilo. Um, she's a professor at the Universität Opolski. And we have as well uh, Valeria Floriano. Uh, she's the head of International Relations Office at the Università dei Studi di Palermo. Uh, we have Alexander Frame, professor and chair of the Mobility Mission Board at the Université de Bourgogne in Dijon. And we have Samuel Lopez. He's a PhD student at the Universitat de Valencia. So, let's jump right in. To our first question. I know that all of you are intensely involved in For Them. So we have uh, Barbara, who is on the work package common structures. We have on the coordination and communication board, uh, Valeria and Alexander. We have on the steering committee, Samuel and Alexander. So what was your motivation when you started with For Them, when you got involved? And maybe also what's your motivation now? because that might have changed. Maybe I can, I can jump in and, and sure. begin. Yes. <laughs> um, yes, well, I think that the, as, as Vice President Jolie said earlier, um, for them or the Uni European Universities Initiative is really uh, a unique chance, um, possibly in the history of international relations between higher education uh, establishments to go further in what we've been trying to do for many years and what we have done and your own example uh, is a good example of this but with uh, this initiative we can aim at not just the five to ten percent uh, of students who uh, traditionally are interested in uh, this kind of mobility but we can really aim at everybody um, through also these new forms of digital collaboration and so on uh, we can bring Europe home, uh, the phrase that we used earlier, and uh, for me this is really uh, something I see as a unique chance and something that I really want to devote my energy uh, mm -hmm. towards. So it would be interesting maybe to hear from, from Barbara her perspective from the side of administration because um, we often think of the, the student perspective, but what was your motivation to come on board? Well, there were <laughs> several motivations in fact, because from one side there was an excellent phone call from a friend from Dijon who is sitting here uh, in this very room, uh, and I mean Mr. Bernard Altheim, who called me and said, look, there is a wonderful opportunity for us, because so far we collaborated in very unique program of free national master studies where students are um, doing uh, studies, study programs uh, in more than traditional educational way. So mm -hmm. basing on this phone call, I was thinking to myself that a new entity is appearing entirely in a European um, educational area. 
And then when we started to discuss how to arrange mm -hmm. it, how to involve people, how to organize it, suddenly we realized that we are not only offering education, but we are creating opportunities, unique opportunities. Mm -hmm. And now as we see the alliance growing, enlarging, which mm -hmm. is a great uh, perspective, we see that we are heading into entirely new creation in uh, educational sphere. Mm -hmm. So so if you ask me if I compare my motivations then, mm -hmm. yes, absolutely, just the need for international cooperation. Some people just love international cooperation and I'm one of them. Mm -hmm. But if I look also here, I'm fully uh, satisfied with the direction that we are going, although it is full of, of, uh, of, mm -hmm. of challenges naturally. Thank you. There you go. Yes. <laughs> seven different organizational structures and uh, uh, we were from uh, different countries and governed by different ministries with different rules. Mm -hmm. So I'm talking about the obstacles that at the beginning we had faced when we met each other. Of course, it was very challenging and we had uh, to, to know each other and to know our differences in order to uh, try to overcome them. And uh, in fact, uh, especially in the mobility mission, we have worked a lot about overcoming these barriers. Mm -hmm. We have had a very uh, deep discussion on our barriers. We have drafted a report on the barriers in our uh, mm -hmm. mobility um, activities mm -hmm. in each university. And at the end, um, we realized that there were a lot of difficulties, but the challenge was very important and we tried to work on these um, obstacles and overcome them. Mm -hmm. And at the end, in fact, we had the, the result of this work that is a chart of the um, mobility that all the universities signed and mm -hmm. they all agreed on the work that we had to go to, to do to, to go forward. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So in a sense, in fact, once you drafted uh, uh, a report to uh, mobility barriers, the barriers cease to be barriers and they become challenges, uh, <laughs> gaining absolutely a new sense of understanding abilities. Mm -hmm. And I understand like that the, the organizational and structural barriers by now challenges have been there, but um, from the side of like the student perspective, you're not so much involved in like in the organizational structure, so to say. What kind of challenges do you see there? Yeah, all of them are related with things that the, my colleagues are, are, are saying. Uh, the COVID-19 for us was especially very difficult because our priorities were family and studying. Mm -hmm. So when we started to, to work to, together since two, almost two years, um, it was really difficult to um, to try to, to start to build uh, something something together mm -hmm. because we we have different period uh, some periods we have uh, uh, to attend to our lectures online every day so it was a lot of work for us so mm -hmm. today and tomorrow we 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 hope to to continue our work because we need a structure in order to coordinate better our uh, our efforts mm -hmm. and um, what I want to like also uh, also add there is the question of well um, oftentimes people might see for them but they don't take like uh, action they don't see it it's actually for them they see it as oh this is like perfect it's for someone else so um, what do you say like how do we get those people mobile because the the goal is to actually have every second person like 50 percent of the student body the academics and the staff to accept this offer and to make it their own. Mm -hmm. Well, if I may start, and I will <laughs> be happy to, 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 to pass uh, the, the word to our chair of uh, mobility vision board, but I have to say that the ambitious goals that for the Alliance has in those percentages is, um, I would say, revolutionary. And all revolutions take time, although, although in the history revolutions are rather fast, but in our case this is a very well-defined revolution that takes time. 
and in order to attract people, in order to involve people, uh, for them is working on some sort of identity. Professor Jolie spoke about for them spirit. This is more or less the thing that um, for them alliance is trying to develop in order to make it visible, recognizable in the minds and ambitions of our staff and students. Yes, I mean, maybe I could also let you in on a, a kind of private joke that we had uh, right back from the beginning of the, 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 the uh, negotiations and the discussions um, when uh, we had this ambition, uh, this objective, this ambitious objective of 50% mobility by 2025. And uh, we were discussing this, how are we going to do this? And uh, I actually, at one point, uh, said, well, we should be aiming not for 50%, but for 100% impact 100% mobility because if you think about it through virtual collaboration if we can offer every student at some point in their university career the chance to take part in a group activity online uh, you know obviously this does not mean moving 50% of our population physically uh, this would have a, an ecological impact a financial impact and so on the idea is to bring internationalization home and so to offer everybody this opportunity to, to get to know to work with colleagues, mm -hmm. other students in other universities, and to grow from that experience, which helps to share this, this European ideal uh, mm -hmm. that motivates so many of us. Uh, yes, and I think also that we need to communicate more within our own institution to get more mm -hmm. people involved. For example, in my institution, we, we work on this project, and so we are well involved in this, but many people within the institution not even know that this exists because we are a very big institution so it is not easy to involve mm -hmm. a lot of people so we need to work more also within our university in order to communicate so this is very important for me the internal communication of the project in order to get more people involved not only students because they they are very uh, communicative but maybe also at level of the governance at mm -hmm. level of the um, central offices, they need to be more involved, especially beco because we are going to internationalize not only um, the educational offer, or we are not caring only about labs or research or mobility, we are caring on especially to internationalize our structure. We want to internationalize our institution, so we need to get more people involved in our activities. Mm -hmm. I can imagine that for some people, um, who are already on like uh, either on a lot under a lot of stress or already faced with like a multitude of different projects etc um, that it, it's maybe not so clear to see why put so much work into for them yes. what would be your your message to them like taken from your own experience well I think that first of all we need to communicate it is not a project like the others it's not a project it's an alliance we go on calling it project it's an alliance it's completely a different vision it's not yeah. the pro research project they are used to that maybe there are also more um, there's also more funding but it's not a problem of the big the big dimension of the project is uh, important the importance of the alliance. So we need to make it clear that is a completely visionary um, program that we need to promote and, uh, and get all the people involved. Maybe when, when we talk, for example, I mean, we've been having meetings recently with uh, our administrative staff, our technical staff uh, in the University of Burgundy and saying to them, look, this alliance is for you as well. Mm -hmm. It's I, uh, possibly um, uh, staff who are, who are used to seeing the students uh, going abroad, the uh, academics going abroad, but saying, well, uh, we are part of an alliance, and for the alliance to work, we need to get to know our partners, and we need to be able to understand the differences that may exist, but also the synergies, and also learning from uh, the best practices uh, mm -hmm. from one university to another. And uh, when we're discussing this in meetings, then uh, our ad administrative colleagues are extremely um, uh, enthusiastic and interested, saying, yes, I would love to go and see how things are done uh, in this partner university on this campus, uh, and also uh, live the, the international dimension of my job, uh, even if I don't have this opportunity very often mm -hmm. so far. So basically, it's about like facilitating, showing people that you have this, this dream, uh, kind of like a dream in your job, um, and there is this possibility. 
and it's actually real. It's about opening up a new uh -huh. dimension uh -huh. of uh, people's jobs mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. something which may be a source of frustration or a source of confusion. Uh, obviously, our role is then to accompany them uh, with mm -hmm. training, with mm -hmm. um, you know, language uh, mm -hmm. training, with uh, linguistic tools, sort of translation tools and so on, mm -hmm. uh, to show them that this is possible. Yeah, from the student per pers perspective, in my case, I did my Erasmus nine, nine years ago in Finland, and still uh, I'm thinking in, in my Erasmus, that's the, the, the common things that we have in, 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 in common is the, the, our passion uh, for the mobility. Uh, mobility as a lifestyle. The mobility can change uh, our vision of Europe or how, how we can understand our cultural differences, but we have m much more things in common at mm -hmm. the end. And this is really beautiful. So mm -hmm. as a student that I experienced what is mobility, once Erasmus, always Erasmus, <laughs> I really passionate to, to give a lot of, lot of opportunities to our uh, current stu students because we are aware that the, it, the university is not just obtain a, a title, mm -hmm. it's the whole experience and also engage with society. That's why the city councils, uh, chamber of commerce are here mm -hmm. today because mm -hmm. for us it's very important mm -hmm. to cooperate with uh, schools, with the uh, mm -hmm. uh, neighborhood association. For mm -hmm. them, it's for everyone at the mm -hmm. end. Mm -hmm. so. So, so with this like, uh, long-lasting widespread commitment, uh, showing that, that uh, alliance and alliance actions, including mobilities, are not just about projects, are not just about traveling entirely, but getting an entirely new dimension of, of education and 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 uh, if uh, uh, Alex was um, giving one example of joke I can also give another one saying that after one of the meetings of the steering committee we uh, discussed the, the the sustainability of the alliance and the actions of the alliance mm -hmm. but what is very important for the trustworthiness of of, of the alliance to uh, to eyes of people um, we somehow concluded that uh, that, the, that the duration of the alliance is like a full long-lasting commitments and the joke was that the slogan that we could uh, take just for, 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 for any reasons was that uh, marriages are for life <laughs> but alliances an alliance for them alliances for eternity and our the author <laughs> Dr. Tanya Herman the author of that was uh, uh, given a huge applause of that <laughs> <laughs> yes absolutely and um, uh, speaking about like for for them for you I just wanted to like, make you all aware that we will open the discussion also for question, questions from the room. So if anyone has a question, please feel free. We will come to the open question part in a moment. S just stand up and kind of like do an acclamation of what you want to ask. And same goes, by the way, for the people in the live stream. If you have a question, just put it in the commentary and we will here make sure that it will reach our panelists. Um, having said that, I have one last question, because you already mentioned COVID being like a huge challenge. Um, so assuming this challenge will be overcome, hopefully, hopefully in the near future, what will be like, what's the outlook for, for them? Because I feel like you started in a bleak time and now you must be like, in, in German we have this expression of like someone who wants to start and they're doing like this with their hooves. Mm -hmm. um, uh, like a little racehorse. So what are you like thinking that will happen as soon as we can? Mm -hmm. I think we're all little racehorses. I mean, that, that, <laughs> that image is quite good. We're all ready to go. Um, I mean, COVID was a challenging time, obviously, for obvious reasons. However, there, were also, uh, there was also a silver lining to this crisis in that we will now have uh, digital competencies uh, in terms of mm -hmm. uh, using digital tools and preparing uh, this um, online collaboration, which is such an important part of our strategy. Um, meaning that, yes, what we need now is to build the relationships uh, between students, between staff, in order to give them that desire to go on collaborating together online, uh, even once mm -hmm. uh, physical mm -hmm. mobility is possible again. And uh, it is lovely to be here today. Uh, and thank you mm -hmm. to the organizers for, for, for organizing this and allowing us to uh, finally get out of our universities and to meet all the people with whom we've been interacting on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, physical mobility, mm -hmm. short-term mobilities for students, uh, teaching staff, 
administrative stuff, technical mm -hmm. stuff, traveling between the campuses, uh, but also online collaboration. And that I'm more optimistic about now than I was even at the start of the, uh, the mm -hmm. alliance because of what we've been through together. Mm -hmm. and I think that, yeah. uh, oh, sorry, yeah. Yeah. it's okay. <laughs> so I think that when we planned this uh, alliance, we thought on mostly at uh, physical mobility, of course, because uh, of course COVID was not there and so we couldn't imagine that we had to face such a situation. But when COVID arrived, I think that uh, after the first moment we had the um, opportunity to react. In fact, a lot of innovative uh, um, activities were uh, planned after and Alex uh, quoted before. And so it was a good reaction of the Alliance. So we must learn from this mm -hmm. and we must use these new innovative structures in order to improve our mobility goals that of course needs to become physical again. In fact, mm -hmm. we are here physically for the first time after mm -hmm. two years, more or less one year and a, and a half mm -hmm. and so we are ha happy of this mm -hmm. and also our students are going to start again their staff mobility so it's good uh, but we need to improve also this uh, new innovative structure mm -hmm. and use them also in the future mm -hmm. after covid as mm -hmm. hopefully finish this period yeah. Like the for them offices, for example, would be like a yes. an important point. Yes, there uh, they were. Uh, yes, for them offices is uh, one of the um, first goals of the alliance because at each university established um, an, an office, a specific office within the international relations office, and it was very good because it was like a transversal office within all the alliance. And of course, they are doing a very good job, and I uh, would like to thank all the Fordham offices of the Alliance because uh, thanks to them we are doing really a good job. Mm -hmm. Thank you to you all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but, mm -hmm. but if I may, I would say that uh, COVID and pandemia paradoxically contributed to innova innovative character of, mm -hmm. of mobilities that for them originally planned because uh, physical mobilities that we dreamed about exchanging masses of students and stuff, um, it was a, a, a natural and an excellent goal and it is still prevailing. However, now in the face of challenges coming not only from educational area but also coming from the surroundings of uh, higher education institutions, like for example, the agenda of, of, of European Union concerning green Europe or global Europe or um, ecological challenges. It seems that COVID somehow uh, put us to the test and I think mm -hmm. that we managed to pass the test <laughs> with the innovative character of uh, virtual mobilities or hybrid uh, mobilities. So it really pushed it. Uh, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> um, Samuel, having heard all of that as a student, what would be your kind of like your answer, what do you um, expect now to happen for the students from the side of, of for them to really like, like make them aware of all of that, what we, what we plan, what we want, what yeah. should be there? I was looking forward to this event because I see it like a turning point because there, there is a lot of work, a lot of work behind uh, these years and now it seems that finally we are going uh, to be ready to all the different kind of mobilities, uh, possibilities, physical, blended or virtually. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of uh, actions, uh, ideas to share with our students and our mission now is to, to back to our campuses and uh, say, wow, for them is here, it's ready, we are waiting for you, let's, mm -hmm. let's make this happen because now it's, uh, it's possible. Mm -hmm. So all of us, we are really passionate if, uh, if for them. Mm -hmm. And uh, I agree with uh, what uh, Valeria said, that we should improve our communication uh, mm -hmm. uh, work because uh, still uh, that we, ha that we have a lot of students that, not, that they are not aware of what exactly for them, mm -hmm. all the opportunities we, uh, that we offer. And this is, from my point of view, our, our priority now. So to really make it like yeah. visible in the campuses, yeah, perfect. The video, the previous video is amazing. Yes. <laughs> it's, it's going to help us yeah. a, a lot. Yeah, no, we just have to like get it out to the people. Um, speaking of the people out there, do we have questions from the live stream or questions from the room? Mm -hmm. 
let us consider that the audience participating in live stream, they are also participating in mobilities, don't you think? <laughs> Can we consider it like that? Actually true, like they are here with us in Mainz right now and wherever they might be at the moment. Let's count them, ah, let's. <laughs> 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 One step closer to the 50%. The, <laughs> um, the answer, uh, the question here would be, could you give us some concrete opportunities to be mobile? So yeah. I think the question would be like really, okay, what can I, what can I book? What can I do? What is there? So For example, we have the short mobilities that uh, every year we plan uh, almost 10, oh, at least 10, kind of mobilities where uh, 35 students coming from the, the seven universities gather to ask for a summer school or a seminar uh, about one specific topic and everything is covered by, by the alliance. Uh, travel expenses, uh, the, um, the food, uh, everything. So this is a big opportunity to experience uh, mobility uh, easily because it's between one and 10 days, till 10 days, and then you back. And maybe it's the first step then to make a, a, a longer mobility. Mm -hmm. This is one example. Mm -hmm. You could provide more? Completely. I mean, the first taste. The, the, exactly. That was the idea, is that not everybody is in a position where they can or want to take a semester out of their studies. But uh, with short-term mobility, which was not possible under Erasmus Plus before mm -hmm. uh, the European University's initiative, uh, we allow students to go between yeah, five and ten days uh, to meet other students, to uh, complete an activity of their choice uh, on a partner campus. Um, so this is, this is one action. We've also got the first For Them campus taking place at the moment. Mm -hmm. So bringing together students from all our universities uh, for a semester-long mobility, but around a specific theme. Uh, there are international classrooms being organized uh, in Mainz this year. There are um, there's a For Them campus coming up as well in uh, the University of Latvia. Mm. Um, and these are so, so student activities, plus, of course, the activities taking place in the labs, uh, where students are also moving around mm. uh, through summer schools, winter schools being organized, and so on. We have mobility opportunities for uh, academics, uh, obviously, um, uh, in the classic Erasmus Plus uh, mobility, but uh, also through um, a whole variety of things in terms of uh, these, uh, these different collaborations through the, the, the different missions that we have, uh, be it labs, be it uh, outreach. I have the feeling you could go on I and on. Go for ages. <laughs> so um, maybe as a last quick question, um, if I now like, got the taste of it, uh, where can I find, like, what is there? Like, if I'm saying, like, wow, sounds good, where do I go? For them website? the website? Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. for them offices. Yeah. There is yeah. a general website, of course, of the Alliance, and then uh, each university has uh, its mm -hmm. own page uh, where you can find all the opportunities. And, of course, there are the for them offices. They can be contacted via email, uh, and uh, they mm -hmm. can answer, of course, and uh, present all the opportunities for students and staff. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So but basically, the message is don't be shy. This <laughs> is a mutual process, so you can mm -hmm. find us, but we will also try to find you. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. So, yeah, a I last, would, last I would like yeah, to add social media is very important for us as students. Mm -hmm. We use Instagram, Facebook, and it's a really good channel to, to share what we are doing and our further plans. So, mm -hmm. social media. So, getting the message out there. So. Thank you very much. That was already our time for the first panel. So a round of applause, please, for Barbara Surilo, well, <laughs> Valeria Floriano, Alexander Flame, and Samuel Lopez. Thank you. And before we come now to our uh, second panel, which will talk about uh, the outreach mission of For Them, I can just uh, share with you uh, what it, what it uh, actually impressed me, like talking to our panelists even before here, is how much motivation and grit is already there inside of the, the Fortum organization. And I think with that kind of like a passionate approach to it, um, who knows what is possible? Like kind of like we're pushing the border um, in the actual and in the, uh, in the kind of, uh, yeah, uh, not quite literal sense. But talking about 
for them is also always talking about Europe. And we heard so much about what is possible at the universities for students, for staff, for the, uh, the people doing research, for academics and so on. But let's not forget what it also means, because it actually means bringing people very closely together. Um, I really like that we heard earlier about, from, about the one million Erasmus babies uh, from uh, Mr. Jolie, because I have actually like uh, two Erasmus babies in my own circle of friends. So they met at, uh, in Sevilla while doing Erasmus, and now <laughs> they're living here in Mainz, so they're all already living that dream. And I hope we will see more of that in the future. So really taking this idea of professional exchange and bringing that home to the people inside, basically to the kitchen table. Um, and with that, I hope I can take you onwards to our outreach mission, not only to the kitchen table, but into our businesses, into the civic engagement, and towards the people living in our, in our cities, um, in the for them cities, let's, let's call them that for the, the sake of the moment. Um, so, I warmly welcome for our uh, second uh, panel discussion, Timo Koivisto, the mayor of the Finnish town of Juveskole. We have Anna Roppelt. She studies currently here at the Johannes Gutenberg University. We have uh, Aigas Rosto Rostovskis. Uh, he's the head of the Leptuian Chamber of Commerce and Industry. And last but not least, Esteban Sanchez. He's professor and chair of the Outreach Mission Board at the Universitat de Valencia. A very warm applause of applause for them. <laughs> so, let's start with a very big question. Because we have like, heard all of that motivation and like, good thoughts from the first panel, so I feel like I have to like, start with something critical, because we heard about Erasmus, and that program has been criticized sometimes as it only being able to reach like, a certain uh, strata of the, the students. Basically, like, some people say it's only reaching the elite. But for them, has a different approach. It wants to be really for everybody. So how do we reach people even outside of the universities, outside of academia, people no matter what their socioeconomic background? Um, what role can for them play in this and maybe even this look at that for them is also fostering like civic engagement? May I start? Sure. Well, I think uh, for them, when it connects universities and cities even more than we are connected right now, uh, I think, think that has a big effect here because cities can play a big role in this. We can, we can do a lot. Uh, for example, in Finland, cities and municipalities are responsible for most of the welfare services of the society. We are responsible for education, for schools, for elementary schools. We are responsible responsible for social and health care and I think especially schools which are very important in this important project also are a measure of, of reaching people no matter what their, what their background is or, or their social, social background or education. So I think cities have a role to play here but the answer is not easy. Civic in engagement is, is of course a very important part of this and in this also cities can play a big role because we have a lot of cooperation with the civil society organizations. So. Mm -hmm. But in this world, the background, unfortunately, it matters, but we, we can make it better with, with cooperation between universities and cities, I think. Mm -hmm. So what would be the student perspective on, especially like uh, the civic engagement which was named? Mm -hmm. So I think for them is uh, really a great chance to um, do the civic engagement project because it's actually really unique that civic engagement projects are funded. So if students want to start a civic engagement project that goes across borders, we get some funds doing that. And that's, I think, also 
a really good motivation and just it makes it a lot easier to organize um, something um, with so many people if you if you do that project um, in so many different countries. So that's really something um, which is a great chance to give back to society to start um, like a joint project um, in in the seven countries or in in the nine countries soon. Yeah. So what about like the the perspectives maybe from the side of um, enterprises because they not every enterprise is automatically connected to to academia and whatnot. So how do we get those involved as well. Uh, thanks. Uh, from the uh, entrepreneur side, it's uh, initiative is very important. It's, and it's a very important triangle because all companies are located in cities. Uh, or, or I would say maybe not in cities, but in cities, uh, many companies. And of course, uh, universities as well in, is, uh, are located in, 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 in cities. That means, if we, that means we, we are all in, in on one on one ship or in one boat it means if we can cooperate to, uh, together to more uh, efficiency then the results will be better uh, for all uh, three participants means university cities and, and entrepreneurs but as well for wider society that means this initiative it's it's very important and when when I found out this information of this initiative it came from our university I, I uh, uh, I, I tell, of course, we are ready to participate and, and come to Mainz and, and afterwards I think we will come back to, to, to Latvia and uh, discuss more deeper with maybe other universities and, and uh, as well more deeper with, with our uh, uh, city management. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And um, talking about, already talking about uh, trade relations, um, where could we find like win-win opportunities maybe between companies and universities? Uh, Estima. Yeah, definitely. Uh, we want to give this uh, relation uh, uh, international flavor. That's I think mm -hmm. which could be missing. Uh, our universities are already in touch with our cities and with our society. We could be, we could do better for sure. But uh, this European um, uh, flavor is needed, and that's I think what it's about in for them. And the win-win situation would be to be able to uh, reach the, uh, the companies in our area, uh, work together with the municipalities, but also mm -hmm. be able that they work together within the alliance or with the cities of the alliance. I think this would uh, make us very happy, all of us, <laughs> and will be definitely a win-win. And at the end, this is for them, that our students are able not only to join or make a practicum in a in a company of our city, but mm -hmm. in one of the cities or in one of the companies of the Alliance. And that's what we want to help to happen. That's, I think, mm -hmm. the, would be the win-win situation, at mm -hmm. least at the short term, and of course, for the long term, that is, is a, a normal situation. So, uh, maybe as an example, you escalate, like, what stands the city to, to gain from uh, going inside of this uh, and really, like, catching the opportunities for them? Well, I think there are a lot of uh, positives that, that a city like Yuvaskula can get from in participating in this kind of project. Uh, Yuvaskula is a city of a little bit uh, over 140,000 inhabitants and even though in many countries that you come from, you, this city of this size wouldn't even be called a city in Finland. We are the seventh biggest city and what's more important, we are one of the fastest growing cities in Finland and the main reason is that uh, we are a city of education. We have a little bit over 40,000 students in our city, and we have a university of 15,000 students. So it's very important for the city of U It's the main reason why the city of Uvascula is growing, and it's the main reason why, why the businesses in Uvascula are doing pretty well. And if we want to succeed in the future, the, uh, the uh, people are aging in Finland faster than in any other country in Europe and that means that the age classes will be smaller and, the, and we have to get international talent into Finland and we have to get international talent into our university and into the city of Jyväskylä and I see this, this for them as a very good measure to, to reach that, that goal. So we have, to, we have to succeed in this kind of projects to be a, an attractive and a growing city in the future. Mm -hmm. That's the, that's the overall view, and I, I can go into the mo more details, of course, but uh, we, we, have to be, we, we have to participate in this kind of projects with great cities like the cities which are, which are represented here. 
Maybe I will put one more dimension in this discussion. Uh, of course, uh, Europe, uh, it's our common place and, and we, we cooperate, but uh, we have kind of competition as well with other regions in, in world, means states and Asia and so and so. And of course, if we as uh, European countries and like Europe together will be more competitive, if we will cooperate more deeper, mm -hmm. then uh, it will bring a common value for all of us. That means we need to, to become more closer and that cooperation as well between universities, cities and entrepreneurs. Yeah, and maybe to add to that, as a like, or from a <clears throat> student perspective, of course, like um, talking about the companies, I think a win-win situation is definitely for us students gaining experience in the companies, but then also the companies um, like gain from our knowledge that we got from our universities, but also that the knowledge that we got um, within for them. So I think that's definitely also, I would say, a win-win situation. Mm. And it's it's easy to see how 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 this will be. Uh, win-win situation for, for companies also. It, it goes two way, in f fact. They get uh, international talent to their companies. There are several companies located in Uvascula which have uh, hired international talent to their companies via, for example, student exchange programs in which the sport them can, be, can, be, can benefit a lot. And mm -hmm. while they, have, they get an international talent, they get international expertise, but many times they get also a uh, straight connection to global market with that one talented international person. So there are a lot of, lot of ways in which companies can benefit from this. Mm -hmm. And I would also like to stress mm -hmm. that we are also focused on schools, as you mentioned before. I think uh, going in and with the help of experience like in Jivescule, which are very close to, to, to the education, uh, to really bring this idea of internalization of European uh, way of, of living to, to the schools and make, this, make this, the, the teachers and, of course, for this, the, uh, the students aware or the pupils aware of this situation, I think, is the starting point where we can gain at the long run uh, when they come to the university and later on move mm -hmm. around in our regions and further, of course, within Europe. So. So kind of like we put like the, the seedling of exchange now and it can like grow into something. Um, Definitely. Talking about what, what it can grow into, um, let's be supervisionary at the moment. Let's say for them has like a huge start after COVID. We're really kicking it off. Uh, time passes, projects grow, the labs really bustle with ideas. We are 20 years in the future, we meet back here, we look back and we say, okay, what did we achieve? What's the image that comes up in your mind if you're thinking about that? I would like that our students not only have the opportunity to find a job close in their regions, but also in all these other seven or nine regions, or eight other regions they are in, uh, being able even to uh, consider having uh, digital uh, jobs, I mean, with home office, why not? And, and the other mm -hmm. way around, so that everybody, the market opens. They need really to manage the, the, the languages, but this, is a, this can start from schools, so I think mm -hmm. this would be a, a, a very uh, nice view mm -hmm. of what the future could look like. So, so kind of like I, I find my job in Valencia, but for family reasons I move to Uescole, I keep Why my not? same job, and, uh, and it works like a charm. Yeah, th that's, that's totally possible. Uh, working remotely can, as we have seen during this uh, COVID-19 period, is working remotely is, is it's now much more possible and much more accepted as a way of way of working mm -hmm. right now and th there's no reason why it wouldn't uh, be even more possible in the future one concrete benefit there, there's of course uh, in 20 years i would like to see that the us is, is a more international city and and even more uh, we have found many ways that we can make use of these international connections. The international doesn't mean only that we, we go abroad that, or we cross borders, but we, we have to have a more internationally minded citizens, more internationally minded city, I, I guess. But more mm -hmm. concrete result of this bottom could be, I, I asked our 
excellent mayor of the uh, rector of the mayor is also excellent in the university. <laughs> <laughs> our excellent rector of this our, our university. I, I asked him what would he expect from this this fought and cooperation, and, and I think he had a, a pretty good and, and concrete uh, target that uh, that this exchange programs, exchange uh, stu student making ex ex uh, international exchange would be more systematic and more organized part of studies, mm -hmm. and it would be possible via this kind of uh, cooperation, strategic cooperation between universities, strategic partnerships, which we are, I think we are, we are able to form via this Fortin project. So that's a very conc concrete target. Mm -hmm. it, it shouldn't take as long as 20 years, maybe five or 10 years, but it's, it's a very good target for the city also. Mm -hmm. Mm, I think I have many visions for that, <laughs> but um, I would say that in 20 years I hope that uh, the universities will share their knowledge so everybody can benefit from the knowledge that we're actually uh, producing in a way. Mm. Um, and then I would say also the cities will have a lot of projects, a lot of joint projects from, from all our universities, um, so we can give back some social values also to the different um, societies in, in the different cities. Yeah, if you talk about future, the, after 20 years, I see the people more more happy, and the um, biggest percentage of, of our society will do jobs w w what they like, really, what they like, what they are involved, in, and, and the incomes are a are, are good level, and that means all our uh, society will be more, more happier. <laughs> It, I think that's a that's a good plan. If yeah, if it's, more it's very, it's very good means plan. more happiness, it's very good plan. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So since we're already like with very much like on the visionary side now, um, we have talked so far like a lot about like the concrete measures. What does it mean for businesses? Uh, how can we connect people? But I want to take it back to the European idea actually. So what can we? learn from, from for them? What can, what can they learn from it? So we talked about like, okay, it can change some mindset. What exactly would this change mean for the individual person? I know it's like kind of like philosophical, but maybe you have an answer for me. <laughs> mm, maybe I can start for the students or for yeah, the young generation. Like, yeah. <laughs> 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 so um, I would say uh, Fordham is a, is a great chance to, to think about Europe, to have an idea about Europe and to get closer together again, to also be really critical, to ask critical questions about what is going on, but to see, in, see the chance in, in shaping um, what we actually want to change. And I think Fordham can really be a place to do that. Um, yeah. <laughs> Maybe to feel happy, as, as my colleague <laughs> yeah. was saying, mm -hmm. uh, uh -huh. but not only at home, but that home is an extension, or his home is an extension to the other regions and to the rest of Europe, of course. This would be very nice. There are barriers of all kind, of course, but mm -hmm. uh, we see that they are falling, and, and I think this is our task to keep on that these barriers are disappearing in 20 years, mm -hmm. 25. Maybe. Uh, of course, we understand, and we all are from different countries, but uh, the Europe is our common home. And, and if we will participate in different kind of activities uh, more, more often and more deeper, then, then we will understand each other better and deeper. And it's, it's give benefits for all of us and for Europe together. Yeah, I've got not much to add to that. That's a great vision, to be happy and to be more. <laughs> <laughs> To be closer, and it, it and it, it should concretely it just should mean that uh, it would be easier to get uh, trainerships, internships, to get uh, uh, possibilities to work work all over mm -hmm. Europe, or at least in this bottom city. Yeah. And so, it, it talking about how all of this is is possible, I feel like we have like a lot of opportunities in each and every place, in each and every university, every city, in the different, um, uh, different companies attached there. Um, the big question in my mind would be how do we 
how do we get them together? Like, how can like a matching maybe look like? Like, how could someone find out what is needed in the city of Uvescole? How could someone find out like what uh, business in Riga would need? So, what could be an answer to that, which for them could provide? I think for them itself is is a kind of an answer to that question. I, I think mm -hmm. this is the measure how, how we make this. It's more natural. This is the measure how, for, for example, people in Valencia would know that uh, you can live a uh, tolerable life in the city of Yvaskula also. So, <laughs> so it's, it's putting it definitely on the map yeah. there. Mm -hmm. yeah. that, that's our job, to find the tools to make this mm -hmm. happen, to, to how the, the civic engagement people can work together and find their joint interests, the same as together with the cities, and this is for them, for the younger generation, <laughs> <laughs> and also for us, of course. Yeah, that, that's 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 the idea. Using digital uh, tools, using um, travels. I think I, I still believe that the physical meetings are necessary at some point, although they can be reduced. And this we have learned. So mm -hmm. this all together, mixed together, and put together, this should be the result. I, I hope. Mm -hmm. Like everywhere, promotion is very important, and uh, good exa good examples always are working very well. Because if somebody in Valencia and in your school and in, in in everywhere uh, uh, here, then they come very good examples. Then then they they come pushing to others to to move forward and find as well similar things and and, and etc. Yeah, promotion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and I would say good communication. And if I can yeah, add to what Samuel said earlier is uh, visibility. So for them has to become more known to a lot of people. So it's easier to make that communication that we need for it. Mm -hmm. So how, how should, in your opinion, be like that, that communication? So we could, because you already said like, okay, the younger generation. So how could we reach the younger generation for, for them? Um, well, I guess it's a tough question because every person like is reachable in a different way. But um, of course, also Samuel said that earlier. Y yeah, the young generation uses social media, so this is where we can be yeah reached, of course. But then also at our universities and maybe in like in in, in a lot of more steps within universities. So if we can. Um, if we can choose our courses, then it might be a really good um, step to to make uh, for them more known and visible um, to, yeah, to, to reach out to the students a little bit better. So kind of every semester in the options, one for them uh, <laughs> well, this seminar. <laughs> this would be ideal, I guess. Uh -huh. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> so what could others, like, other small measures be? What would you wish to, to like, happen next for your city and for uh, that engagement with for them? Well, that's a good question. Something, something concrete would be. It would be very important that, uh, and uh, as this meeting is, uh, it's a good start that the, the business life is is with us in this. Not not only universities, not only cities, but but we should have uh, companies more. Uh, concrete. There should be projects, I think, that which would uh, lead to companies making it more easy to to get internships. Uh, and it, the concrete projects for companies, because they don't, uh, they don't participate in this kind of projects if they don't uh, get some sort of benefit, an <laughs> economical benefit. That's, that's uh, how, how, the, how it works. And we should find ways uh, how, we, how we could uh, make a project, make, make, uh, make concrete projects for the companies that they, they would uh, uh, participate in, in, in these projects with their resources. They would uh, invest in these projects, put money <laughs> in this. That's a good point. <laughs> provide something new. Yes. <laughs> it, it, talking about businesses, what would like, the Chamber of Commerce, what would, what would you say, what could you uh, do together with for them to like, mm -hmm. maybe give ideas to the companies who are struggling right now with this lofty idea like what could be something yeah concrete? actually this project was very good pushing for me because till now we working more separately with universities and with city a bit more separately mm -hmm. now i think it's good good push to to like uh, sit uh, around the table all three parts and uh, 
as, as a colleague told, entrepreneurs are very, very concrete. They need like concrete results. And uh, one thing which is very important uh, as Latin Chamber of Commerce and Euro Chambers, which is uh, Entrepreneurs Europe organizations, they are mostly companies which is small and medium size. And uh, for them is very needed kind of means kind of green line to, to uh, entrance to universities because uh, especially for, because in big companies they have some inside researchers and so and so, but mm -hmm. for small companies it's very important to, to find a very simple way how they, how they find the ways, how, to, how they um, improve the products and services mm -hmm. and so and so. And this is the one concrete thing, what, what, what about I think and thank you for this project. <laughs> <laughs> so basically like as a small entrepreneur myself, I could imagine like, okay, I need some intel into like uh, my side of the business. How do people think about my kinds of products? And I go to the, uh, to the Chamber of Commerce and say, hey, could you put me in touch with someone at the university? Like I need like someone maybe from the psychology department. So that would be like a it way. It works, but, but uh, I think kind of, uh, cities as well sometimes will, because some, some businesses is located on, no, city uh, businesses are located in, in cities, and sometimes they, uh, in these projects, need kind of city, in cities involvement as well. And I, we, we, I think we need kind of uh, rejump in the next level of, of that cooperation. I think uh, this is the, this is the, for us, uh, uh, next challenge, and next step as well for, for chambers. Mm -hmm. So kind of like to get yeah, really yeah. the whole thing moving, <laughs> it needs like some fire from all sides. Mm. Yes. So let's see, do we have some questions from the audience maybe at the moment? Something you would be interested in. Now is the time to ask your question. And don't be shy. <laughs> They are hungry and they want yeah. to. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe. So, if we don't have any questions from the room. <laughs> say what you want to say. We will see if we get some answers. <laughs> Perfect. So just to, to sum up, basically, um, the universities sh and the society outside should not be seen as something different, but as something which merges together and which, in which like many people take like important points, as well as like the, the leaders in the, uh, in the, yeah, in, in society, so to say. I have uh, said it before, we are in the same boat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you. So, anything you want to add to his point? <laughs> 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 he said it all. Huh? <laughs> so, with a look to time, maybe one last idea which I want to take from you, which actually works for us here on the panel as well, is uh, maybe seeing like the, the mission of, of for them really going out and going out to the decision makers, no matter where they might sit, in the companies, in the universities, doing research on climate change and other important topics, in the cities, and to the people who, who want to change something in the cities, in the businesses, and wherever uh, we want to find them. So with that, we already come to the close of our second um, yeah, panel discussion on the outreach mission. I thank you all very much for your valuable input. So give a warm round of applause to Timo Kaivisto, Anna Roppelt, Aigas Rostovskis, and Esteban Sanchez. And my name thank is you. Marietta Gedeke, and I'm very happy now to give the stage uh, to Stefan Jolie for the closing remarks. Standard mm -hmm. closing remarks, just saying, uh, dear for them, colleagues, dear guests here in Mainz, and of course behind the screens following the live stream. Today, for them has taken another really great step to strengthen enhance our collaboration and it goes on by signing ceremony and other workshops uh, in the next day and the evening. But for this afternoon, it was truly a very interesting and very inspiring afternoon and I would like to thank all the speakers for your contributions, all the guests for your attentions. My warmest thanks, of course, to all the people behind the scenes, organizing, managing, recording, Tanya and her team and our media center and so on. Thanks for your great job you did here. We are finishing the live stream now and hope for new possibilities to meet soon. Thank you. <laughs>